Have you ever played a game that was so good you had to come out of a year-long hiatus just to talk about it? Melatonin is a rhythm game similar to Nintendo's Rhythm Heaven series where you play mini games and earn a high enough score in order to progress. But unlike Rhythm Heaven where the mini games are vignettes, Melatonin is themed around the mini games being a character's dreams that they have over four nights, such as dreams about eating junk food, shopping sprees, and watering plants. And even absurd ones like dreams about hitting clocks with a baseball bat or exercising with the buff version of themselves. The minigames do seem random at first, but the dreams do make sense in the context of the story. And the story is what makes the game so much more interesting to me as opposed to other rhythm games like it. Warning, there will be spoilers for the whole game, so I encourage you to play it yourself before watching this. Links for the game are in the description. The character you play as doesn't have a name, so I'll just call them Joe in this video. Throughout the four nights in the game, you learn about Joe's hobbies, aspirations, and their shortcomings. And those shortcomings cause Joe to experience a quarter-life crisis. There's so much to unpack in this game, so let's take a look at Melatonin and what's going on with Joe. Why are they having these dreams, and what do they all mean? Tomorrow, 9 at 11.30 is part 2 of the British espionage thriller. Miss Robertson and David Storm star in The King to Rebecca. On night one, we see Joe just relaxing on the couch in their living room, just doing what a lot of us do, browsing on their phone and watching TV while being surrounded with leftover food and takeout boxes. And then Joe falls into a food coma. You know, just any typical Friday night. A little detail I didn't notice the first time was that you can see a burger on the couch, and when Joe passes out, you can see that they ate it. The first dream that you see in Joe's dream hub is fittingly about food, and is the perfect introduction to how absurd the dreams are gonna get. In this dream, Joe is sitting on a flying dining chair in a land made entirely of junk food, and you have to catch food flying out of sentient boxes and eat them. All of the food that Joe eats in this dream are all ones that they ate that night. Pizza, burgers, and donuts. Fries and soda are also shown in the foreground, and you can see fries and cans of soda on the couch. I really love that the boxes are just happy to shoot food into your face, like how you're happy whenever you're eating your favorite foods. It's just so over the top, I love it. Joe's dreams get even more excessive when we see them go shopping. In the next dream, we get to see Joe go on a shopping spree buying stuff, like diamonds, watches, rings, sneakers, and bottles of Chanel number no. 6. When you look at the living room, you can see a shoebox and some hangers scattered everywhere. So the sneakers in the dream must be ones that Joe wants, but might not be able to afford them. Joe wants to be rich and be able to buy all of these fancy things. And having all of those fancy things leads into the next dream. The third dream is titled Tech, but a more accurate title would be Gaming because Joe has every console in this dream. A PS5, PS4, Switch, Xbox, MacBook, PC, and a VR headset. It's a literal gamer's dream. Maybe Joe bought them all in the last dream. In this one, Joe is playing a VR game shooting enemies like robots, aliens, and zombies. In the living room, there's a tablet sitting on a box on the left, and there seems to be a stack of games on the right. And if you thought playing a high-tech simulation wasn't excessive enough, the last dream of the night gets even more outrageous. The final dream is about followers. You have Joe bouncing from platform to platform getting followers until the song stops at an absurd 46 billion followers. Joe is literally jumping onto different social media platforms and getting popular on all of them. Joe, like a lot of people, wants to be popular online. So they're imagining themselves reaching an impossible follower count on every platform. In the Dream Hub, you can see an Instagram profile and a post, and the last platform they step on in the Dream is Instagram. So Instagram must be their favorite platform and they literally placed it above all the other platforms. After these four dreams, the game gives you one final challenge before unlocking Night 2. The final part of Night 1 is what I call the Whirlpool levels. They're just like the remixes in Rhythm Heaven where you have to play through a mix of all the previous levels in this section. The game doesn't tell you the song titles for the Whirlpool levels, but on the soundtrack this one is titled Indulgence. This whole night, Joe was indulging themselves in both their dream hub and in the real world. They were eating a bunch of junk food, buying a bunch of luxury items, playing an over-the-top VR game, and getting billions of followers on social media. The music in the level is very upbeat and energetic, showing that they're very confident in their life right now. They have nothing to worry about, and they can enjoy what they have. When Joe wakes up from the Whirlpool level, the music from the level is revealed to have been playing on the TV. So the sound of the TV was influencing their dream. 
And before we move on, I wanted to mention that you can see a keyboard on the floor in the living room, hinting that Joe's a musician and that's why their dreams are musical. I didn't actually notice the keyboard until I started working on this video. It's like every time you play this game, you find something new in it. On night two, the sound of the TV is drowned out by the sound of Joe typing on their laptop. Joe is preoccupied with work and not paying attention to the TV. And Joe's laptop is the same one shown in the tech dream in night one. We're also surrounded with cups of coffee instead of junk food. The music in the dream hub is the same song as night one, but sped up since Joe had a bunch of coffee. Compared to night one, Joe falls asleep while working as opposed to falling asleep relaxing on the couch. The dream hub also isn't as organized. Night one feels more like a museum with paths leading to the dreams, but on night two, everything is cluttered. The tiles aren't drawn straight, there aren't any pads leading to the dreams, and items from the exhibits are scattered everywhere. It makes the dream hub feel more like a messy room than a museum because you have to walk around and step over everything. And this is everything you notice before you enter a dream. The first dream is exercise, where Joe has to lift dumbbells alongside a muscular version of himself. In the living room, you can see a kettlebell on the floor, and there are kettlebells next to the punching bag. In the dream hub, there are containers of protein powder, and in the dream, there's a poster for protein, along with some sentient containers in the lockers. When the muscle Joe is lifting, it looks effortless, but when the thin Joe is lifting, they're struggling to keep up with the lighter dumbbells. So Joe feels unsatisfied with how they look and is trying to gain some muscle. Maybe they follow fitness influencers since we know that Joe mainly uses Instagram and they might want to look like the influencers. A little detail I love about this dream is that even if Joe is in shape, they would still be wearing the same outfit. Joe never changes their outfit in any of the dreams in the game. Joe wants to wear a hoodie and slippers all the time and I respect that. To go along with Joe's insecurities about their body, they also work a boring office job. In the second dream, work. Joe's working at an office repeatedly sending emails, filling out spreadsheets, and printing out documents. In the living room, Joe has their laptop, books, post-it notes, and a calendar. So Joe was trying to make a deadline, and they were working on it before they fell asleep. Unlike the other songs in the game so far, it's very difficult to hear the song. You can hear people talking, computer notifications, phones ringing, a dial-up tone, and clacking keyboards. And while you're playing, you can't focus on just one part of the screen. The camera is moving up and down throughout the office, so you have to look around for the visual cues. And it's also difficult to hear the audio cues over the background noise. Joe is dreaming how it feels to work at their job and how monotonous it is. Just sitting at a desk next to other people doing the exact same thing. And also how aggravating it is to try to work with so many distractions and then having to finish work at home. The next dream then thankfully gives us a break from the stress of working at an office job to instead stress about money. The third dream, money, has Joe catching coins raining from the sky while sitting on top of a piggy bank. At first it's pretty easy catching the coins, but as the dream goes on, the coins are redirecting in the wind and the song speeds up. Compared to shopping in night one, Joe is trying to save money as opposed to frivolously spending it all. Shopping has piles of cash everywhere, but in money all the cash is sitting in piggy banks. And in the dream hub you can see a wallet and what looks like bills or receipts. Joe is now thinking about their future and planning ahead as opposed to just buying things now. Joe also focuses on the future in the last dream, dating. In dating, Joe is in a field swiping through matches on a dating app, swiping right on the smiley face and swiping left on everyone else. The smiley face appears to be in a similar field or maybe in the same field, which might mean that Joe wants someone similar to them because all the other matches don't have flowers. A strange detail I notice is that the phone's clock is set specifically to 4.07 a.m. Maybe Joe only goes on dating apps late at night. This dream directly contrasts followers from the previous night. In followers, Joe is dreaming about social media and being popular. But now, Joe is dreaming about using their phone to find a partner. Out of all the songs in night two, this is the most upbeat. And it's reflected in the dream hub. The exhibit for dating is the most put together. None of the floor lines are jagged and it's decorated with flowers and balloons. Dating is something that Joe is excited for as opposed to something they have to do, like working. This night's whirlpool level is titled Under Pressure, and it sure does feel that way. The song starts off calm and slow for about 20 seconds, and then it speeds up. 
like how something seems fine and manageable at first until other obligations start piling up. Joe is under pressure to be in shape, work, save money, and date. They don't have time to sit and watch TV like a night one. They have responsibilities. Just like in night one, the Whirlpool Level song is revealed to have been playing on the TV. The song on the TV is then drowned out by the sound of Joe's alarm, like how the laptop drowned out the sound of the TV in the beginning of the night. Instead of waking up calmly like a night one, Joe is scared and woken up by the alarm. Night three begins with Joe meditating on the couch with some ambient music. Joe cleaned up the living room and now has some house plants, incense, an oil diffuser, a yoga mat, and they're drinking water instead of soda and coffee. When you enter the dream hub, the first thing you might notice is that the music has drastically changed. Instead of it being energetic, it's a much more calming lo-fi song. <laughs> The dream hub has been decluttered as well. Like in the living room, Joe has surrounded themselves with plants. The floor no longer has tiles and now looks more like a trail in a forest. On night one, the path leads directly to the exhibits. But now on night three, you have to step off the trail in order to get to the exhibits. None of the exhibits are labeled with dream about like the previous nights. And the titles are written in a wavy pattern instead of straight. The dreams are also about abstract concepts like time and mind when in the previous nights, the dreams are about things like food or dating that are more personal to Joe. Although Joe has changed the hub to have a more nature theme, the hub is still a museum. Joe is still stepping on a white floor, and there's still rope stopping you from going too far. In the time dream, alarm clocks are popping out of portals and you need to hit them with the baseball bat. On my first playthrough, I didn't get why Joe was hitting clocks. I just found it funny to hit sentient clocks and see them go flying. But when I thought about why Joe was hitting alarm clocks, I realized that Joe is practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness is when you meditate and focus only on what is happening to you in the moment. Like breathing, how your body feels when you're breathing, how the room smells, how your body feels when you're sitting down on the couch, or in Joe's case, the sound of a ticking clock. That's why Joe is in a void rather than a fantastical world like the other dreams. In mindfulness, you're not worrying about anything else. You're in the moment. Alarm clocks remind you of what you have to do later. So Joe is hitting the clocks in order to block out those thoughts. The melting clocks on the platform are also a reference to Salvador Dali's painting, The Persistence of Memory, which itself symbolizes that time is meaningless. Or it could also be that Joe just hates alarms because the alarm scared them awake at the end of night two. Mind is the first dream where you don't see Joe at all. The other dreams either had a third or first person view of Joe. In this one, you just see an eye being hypnotized and you have to blink on the beat. Are we inside a deeper part of Joe's mind? What do the swirls mean? You don't have time to figure out the answer because you have to blink on every beat. There's no downtime compared to the other dreams. It causes you to have tunnel vision and you can't focus on anything except the eye in the swirl. Then later in the dream, there's a section where you actually have tunnel vision and you have to focus on the eye. It's like the game itself is hypnotizing you instead of Joe. The third dream, Space, is my favorite one in the game. In this dream, you have to help spaceships blast off into space. It's really satisfying hearing the spaceships blast off and seeing the little astronauts go inside. The song is also my second favorite on the soundtrack. It sounds like what an astronaut would listen to while they go off and explore. It's very lo-fi sci-fi. It's difficult to see who is going into the ship and it doesn't matter. Space is vast and infinite. The astronauts are going off and exploring the unknown and there's no way of knowing where they're going or what they'll find. Joe is thinking beyond what they know about the world and they're thinking about what might be out there. The final dream is nature and you have to water wilting plants in the meadow. Nature seems to be the prominent theme for the whole night with the hub being surrounded by plants. So Joe finds comfort in thinking about nature and how peaceful it is. The meadow is free of humans and life's distractions. There's nothing left to do except water all the plants that need it. 
The Whirlpool level is titled Meditation, and it's my favorite song on the soundtrack. It was a well-deserved break after getting through Under Pressure in Night 2. The song's tempo doesn't change like an Under Pressure, and you can just chill and enjoy the music. Like how Joe had to deal with working and making a deadline, and now they can just relax. Again, the song is playing on the TV, but this time, the TV turns to static. Instead of being woken up by their alarm, Joe's woken up by the static. Despite meditating, Joe doesn't look relaxed or rested when they wake up. They look just as exhausted as they were in night two. At the start of night four, we're immediately shown that the meditating didn't help because the living room is a mess again. The water bottle and water glasses are knocked over and spilling onto the floor. The houseplants are wilting and the succulent next to the water bottle is also knocked over and spilling on the floor. The incense, oil diffuser, and kettle were moved over in order to make room for all the energy drinks. Joe is suffering from burnout. They're exhausted and just sitting on the couch watching TV and holding an energy drink. They seem to just be watching TV so they can stay awake and not actually enjoying what's playing. I love that Joe is watching what sounds like a wholesome TV show while they look miserable and sleep deprived. The game doesn't cut to later in the night when Joe falls asleep because Joe is not actually asleep, or at least not completely. Just like how the living room is a mess again, the hub is a mess too. The floor is back to being tiled and all the exhibits are titled with Dream About again. The paths are going in all different directions. Some lead to dead ends, some paths even run through the exhibits. In night two, the pads lead directly to the next dream since Joe is excited to have those dreams. But in night four, Joe is lost in life and doesn't know what to do or where to go. The first dream is about, you guessed it, stress. Joe has to climb ladders and narrowly avoid burning in lava. Even if they climb onto another ladder, the lava will keep rising. My husband's theory is that Joe is trying to climb the corporate ladder at work, or they're worried that they're going to lose their job. Even though the song is only a couple minutes, Joe will presumably be climbing forever, much like how life stressors will never go away. Side note, if you're playing this level and you really want to feel stressed, play on hard mode. Also, I gotta admire Joe's dedication to wearing their trusty hoodie and slippers even while escaping lava. Whatever hoodie they're wearing, I want it. After dealing with stress, Joe then has to confront their past. In past, Joe is in a photography darkroom burning photos that we're developing. When the dream starts, you can see that the clock in the background is moving backwards, and the developing photos are also moving backwards. Joe is imagining going back in time and erasing those unpleasant memories before they happen. Out of all of the songs in the game, past stands out as being the slowest and the most stripped down, which is a drum, bass, and a piano. I see this as Joe being at their lowest point in the game. Night four is a tough time in their life, and now they're looking back and ruminating on all of their regrets. As the dream goes on, the music gets faster and you have to burn more photos, so those must have been Joe's least favorite memories. They were going by so fast they didn't even have time to think about them, they just burn them and move on. After looking back on their past, Joe dreams about all of their desires. In Desires, you have to win prizes from a claw machine in an arcade. This might be Joe looking back on their childhood when they went to an arcade, but in this arcade, they aren't winning toys. With the exception of the house, all of the prizes are references to the dreams from night one. At the exhibit, you can see donuts and burgers from food, credit cards, cash, and car keys from shopping, gaming consoles from tech, and message bubbles and hearts from followers. When you're in the dream, there are diamonds from shopping and a smartphone from tech as well. In night one, they were being excessive and indulging themselves in all of these things. But now in Desires, they are all prizes that have to be won from the claw machine. Night one was when Joe was naive, and Desires is the harsh reality that they have to earn the things they want. The last dream of the night is Joe dreaming about the future. 
future has you shooting aliens that pass by the ship, much like the minigame Shoot 'em Up in Rhythm Heaven DS. And it's also similar to the Tech Dream in Night 1, where Joe also fights aliens. But instead of playing a game about fighting aliens, Joe is actually fighting aliens in this dream. Joe has to defend themselves against enemies in real life, and not just in a dream or a video game. Something that used to be fun for Joe is now a necessity. And that harsh reality brings us to the final whirlpool level in the game. The final whirlpool level is titled Setbacks, and it's a very dreary track. Joe is at their lowest point and has a very pessimistic view of themselves, ruminating on how they can escape their stress, they can't change their past, they can't get everything they want like a house or a car, and they don't know what their future holds. Joe feels stuck in their situation and doesn't know what to do about it. After getting through the whirlpool level, again, like the other nights, the music is revealed to be playing on the TV. The energy drinks have worn off, and Joe is finally able to fall asleep as the night ends. It's now the morning directly after night four, and Joe is still sleeping on the couch. The sun is shining through the kitchen and birds are chirping. Joe gets up from the usual spot when entering the dream hub, but now it looks like they washed up on the beach after going through the whirlpool. The hub no longer looks like a museum with exhibits, titles, and white floors. There's only one platform in the sand and it has a sun on it, instead of a moon. There's also no longer any background music. There's only the natural sound you'd hear at the beach. The sounds of stepping on the sand and water, the ocean breeze, and the sound of waves splashing. It looks like Joe is out on vacation because you can see a suitcase, hammock, sandcastles, surfboards, and beach balls. Joe can finally take a break after having burned out, and they can just relax and enjoy the beach. When Joe stands on the sun, we go to the final level in the game. Just like Rhythm Heaven, this level is a mix of all of the mini-games. During the song's intro, the game flashes through all of the dreams in chronological order. Joe is flashing back to all the dreams they had over the four nights. They're looking back on how far they've come, from eating junk food to shooting aliens in space. The song for the level is titled New Day. Joe made it through all of these dreams and the challenges they brought, and now they have to go through everything again. But this time, they know what to do. They've been through it all. And then after you shoot the last alien, there's no more gameplay. You just get to sit back and see all of the dreams you had to play in order to get to that point. Like Joe, you achieved all of this. When you exit the level, Joe wakes up and there's nothing but the sounds of birds chirping. When Joe sits up, they look towards the sunlight shining through the window in the kitchen, and the game fades to black. We don't know what will happen that day, but we know that Joe is ready for whatever it is. This is the only time we see Joe waking up in the morning. All of the other times that Joe's woken up, it was still dark outside, but now Joe is looking at the bright side and accepting whatever is going to happen. The music in the morning is the only time that the song wasn't playing on the TV as well. The TV was turned off, so Joe dreamt the whole song as opposed to all the other times when the TV was playing the song from the dreams. Joe found it within themselves to think positively, and they were able to create a song to celebrate the new day. When I was playing the game, I didn't realize it at first, but it makes so much more sense playing through it again. The whole game is Joe going through a quarter-life crisis, in the beginning of the game, they start out just indulging themselves with junk food, video games, and shopping, like any other young adult enjoying their independence. But then they had to deal with adulthood, like having to work and worrying about their health, money, and dating. They tried coping with all the stress by meditating and buying house plants, but unfortunately the stress was too much, and they suffered burnout thinking about their past, regrets, and what they want in life. Joe was going through what many young adults go through when trying to figure out their lives. What do I want to do with my life? Is this what I want or is this what society tells me? What will I major in? Am I going to find a decent job? How will I pay my rent? How will I feed myself? How do I keep up with my classes and my social life? Am I going to be working at this job forever? Am I going to find a romantic partner? Will I be alone for the rest of my life? And why does everything have to suck? I've thought about all of these things countless times throughout my early 20s. It feels like hell when you're going through it, but you'll land in your feet. You're going to make mistakes and have regrets, and you'll learn from them. You'll learn and do better for yourself. 
Every day is a new day. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. Look at the bright side and focus on today. Melatonin is a really fun and relatable game that I think anyone can find something to enjoy about it. The music, the art style, the story. There's so much to love and enjoy about this game. For me, the game couldn't have come at a better time. So, a bit of a funny story. When I first played Melatonin, it was during the holidays last year, and there was a huge storm in the Midwest. My husband and I were staying home for the holidays because we didn't want to try to travel through the storm. Also, during that time, the furnace at our place was broken. And because it was the holidays, we couldn't get somebody to fix it for a few days. So to keep warm, we stayed in our office with some space heaters because it was the stuffiest room in the house. And while my husband and I were stuck in a freezing house trying to stay warm, we were playing games. I was playing melatonin and watching Joe be stressed out while I was stressed out being stuck inside an office waiting for the furnace to get fixed. Now whenever I play melatonin, it brings me back to what feels like so long ago, when it was just me, my husband, and our dogs crammed into an office with blankets and space heaters. Joe reminded me that I wasn't alone. Playing through the morning level and hearing New Day playing made me so happy. And it almost made me cry. I made it through all of the levels. A bunch of them were hard and I had to keep trying, but I beat them. Playing through the game showed me that even if your life might be as hectic as Joe's, the sun is still going to shine and there will always be a new day. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. It's been a while since I've uploaded and I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel while I was gone. It really meant a lot seeing everyone enjoy my videos and I loved getting to read all of your comments. And during my break, I hit 500 subscribers. Last year, there was only a handful of you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like to let me know. And make sure to subscribe so you know when I upload my next video. I promise it won't take me another year this time. Anyways, this has been Ari. See you guys next time.